We live in an era of plastic. This is a plastistone, a new classification of rock formed from plastic. Our impact will forever be preserved in environmental records serving as a time capsule. Though, if you look close enough, you can see life is beginning to grow as nature is adapting. Where plastic ends, life begins. To both humans For the past and decade, people have been trying to communicate that plastic is causing a problem to the environment. The voices that are being impacted the most are being drowned. We live here. You know? We know what is happening. Hi, my name is Talia Ouellette and I'm an environmental engineer. I've been interested in this plastics problem for over eight years now. For this documentary series, I don't want to talk about how plastics are posing a threat. We know this is a problem which impacts everyone. I want to know how the impacts of plastics are unfairly distributed. This can be seen in small remote islands whose life depend on the ocean. So instead of talking about this problem today, I wanted to listen. Rapa Nui, also known as Easter Island, is one of the most remote inhabited places in the world, located in the middle of the South Pacific. Yet, this island is still not safe from receiving plastics. So, how does this island receive plastics and where does it go? This is a story about the people of Rapa Nui and how we are all connected. Matounei Orunga iti ati nei o tatou waikawa. He ingo ingo plastic. Mahi he, te he anahapa o tatou waikawa. Ki u i tatou hai maramarama, hai ha oro mai. Mo haka hoki haka o mai i te mana. Te mana he hanga, he puuai mo here, mo piri, mo tapu. Rapa Nui, an island where plastic outnumbers the residents. With a population of under 8,000, the island receives over 4.4 million pieces of trash per year. This is equivalent to 500 pieces of plastic per hour. The majority of the plastic that reaches this island comes from the ocean due to the currents bringing this plastic from mainland countries. After speaking with locals, I could sense there was a general frustration with outsiders who hear this island is being drowned in plastic and the main question people ask is, how is Rapa Nui currently dealing with this and what could be done and why can't they just pick it up? These questions will be explored further in this series. Before I continue, I dare to pose this question. Why should a small remote indigenous island in the middle of the South Pacific be left to deal with this alone? They are fighting a battle that isn't theirs, not just out of survival, but because they care for each other and hold hope for their future grandchildren. Their mana is what unites them. And my hope is that we begin to learn from them and to start to listen. Let me take us back to a time before plastics in Rapa Nui, a beautiful and slow paced island life lived by a duty of mana. There was a sense of trust and reliance on the oceans to provide after giving back. But now the ocean is not giving back as it once did. Trust has been broken. I started to fish with my father. 
a los ocho años. Bueno, hasta el 84 fui a la marina, volví, por tres años volví y ahí seguí nuevamente el error de pescador. Ya, bueno, a la vez sí, trabajo en, en construcción, en arte, en pesca, variedad tipo de, de obra, va, y yo lo hago ¿eh? de, 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 de distintos tipos, de casa, de, de mar y de, bueno, de todo. Bueno, la verdad es cierto, eh, afecta mucho. Eh, cuando salgo a pescar atún o otro tipo de pescado, al, al, des, al, al abrir el pescado o las tripas, está lleno de microplásticos. ¿ya? Hay pescado en miniatura grande, se pone flaco porque está lleno de microplásticos. Hemos encontrado eh, ya, eh, en las guatas del pescado, he encontrado tapa de botella, eh, microplásticos. Y el pescado y alguno ya está por morir. After speaking with Claudio, I was touched as he told a story about how he kept picking up trash he found at the ocean despite trying to give up. Above fishing, he has a family with grandchildren. He creates sculptures and he's an artist. He does not enjoy picking trash out of the ocean. It's not his job. And he is often doing this alone by hand or in his vessel since some of the nets are too heavy. This takes fuel and money. He is not financially supported to do this work, yet why does he and his family keep doing it? In the year 1992, I spent about four years collecting trash in my house and I take it to the trash, but there is no place to go. How do you say that? There is no place to gather. And then there was another group y yo, yo me retiré de la basura porque me dediqué en la pesca, pero igual encuentro basura, lo, lo traigo igual. Pero de, de ese año, del 92, hasta hoy siempre he recolectado basura. Eh, hasta mi, mis hijos, mis nietos, sobre todo los nietos me dicen, eh, nuestra isla ya están perdidos por colapsado de microplásticos. Está lleno de plástico, ellos, ellos también recogen, recogen, me lo traen, me dejan en la casa. Y estoy feliz por mis nietos porque se preocupa también de, de nuestro mar. When hearing these stories, you may start to wonder if perhaps this fisherman had more people to pick up this rubbish, that it would solve the issue. Well, let's consider this. Here we have the fisherman who is spending his personal time and money to remove this plastic. A constant, never-ending, uphill struggle. If worldwide plastic production continues to increase, the trash ball this fisherman is pushing will only continue to get bigger. Now, if we were to add more people, the short-term workload for the fisherman may decrease. However, the endless stream of plastic isn't being solved. The ones being impacted the most have the least say in policy decision making. Rapa Nui has been striving to voice their frustrations about this issue. They attend international conferences on plastics, aiming to participate in decision making and pressure those responsible for the problem as they are heavily impacted. However, Pacific small island developing states are consistently outnumbered by representatives from companies causing the harm. These island nations feel powerless regarding the amount of plastic being produced, its destination, and who is held accountable. They attempt to voice their concerns and request financial support to at least manage the collection of this foreign plastic waste. Unfortunately, they have been unsuccessful in securing this support so far. Even when this plastic is collected on this island, where does it go? On an island of 165 kilometers squared, with 40% being designated as a national park, there is no space to store this plastic outside the island's landfill and recycling facility, along with most of the waste arriving to the island is not in acceptable conditions, which outside commercial waste treatment centers on the mainland will accept if not properly collected. 
The next episode will dive further into how this plastic is transported to Rapa Nui, where it comes from. And then the third and final episode will talk more about Rapa Nui and what they are doing for current solutions in place and ways that you can help.